one time we read the problem. This is my time. <laughs> okay. I forgot on all of this problem. We, first thing we like to say, every, the people that organize this conference for the occasion to take part in it, and it were very, very interesting discussion and exchange of uh, We think that Italian participation in the aggression to Soviet EU was one of the main political and related miscalculations made by fascism. The consideration sets aside any moral judgment about both the large number of crimes committed by Italian Soviet and Russia and the criminal global alliance with Nazi. The aggression was a mistake for a lot of reasons, because it took away men and means from, from North Africa, the most important war front for Italy, because it could develop a sort of divisions between militant fascists and the non-fascist people, because it revived internationalist feelings in the factories and in the working class nations, because it was founded on the difficult and uncertain hope to receive from Germany, an area of extreme exploitation in the conquered territories. Italy joined to Germany in the World War II with nine months of delay on 10 June 1940. During that period, fascists tried to prepare the country for the war, both in the military aspect and in the field of public opinion's moral preparation. However, when the World War II declared, all traffic and informants reports were of them less anti-Semitic than Mussolini was like. Also, one year later, the majority of the people did not welcome the news of the participation of the Russian campaign. They were dismayed because the first campaign in the new and very far from in an unknown environment and against an enormous army would have inevitably caused the labor of the end of the war. Therefore, the majority of the people face up a new expedition with deep concern and with few hope. But this attitude was not enough to develop a strong political and social position. However, all these authorities were more worried than the previous year of public opinion sector. Then, in comparison with 1940, a new fact influence of the public opinion and government and authority. USSR still enjoyed the support in some workers and circles, particularly in the great factories of the main industrial cities. Therefore, the expression of support to the military increased after the attack against the Soviet Union, and the shadows of interviews with the rebels of the Northern Pact quickly disappeared. For instance, in general, on 20 June 1941, in the Alice the little technical plant, where we discovered the graffito out of this land in Dallas, Brazil, and on 27 June, Dallas was also in up with Stalin. During all the second half of 1941 and, the and during all 1942, appeared the handwritten and printed leaflets inciting to rebellion, extolling the Soviet Union attacking Germany and ridiculing Mussolini and Hitler. They were found everywhere in the factories, on the walls of the streets, in the countryside, on the trains, and in the public toilets. Nevertheless, Italian participation in the invasion received a strong support by the majority of such a and by the Catholic conservative media. They considered the Russian campaign a crusade a sort of European mobilization against, I quote, the monstrous Soviet collectors. This was clearly a minority attitude among the people, and the same happened for the anti fascist culture. We think that the Russian campaign dealt the gulf of the public opinion from its very beginning, and the division were deeper than one year before. This time, the supporters of the invasion had fanatic but deep rooted and genuine feelings, and at the same time, the opponents of the invasion did not restrict themselves to the desire of the war. 
They question their own national belonging in the name of a broader and general internationalist class of solidarity. Fascist machine of organization, of course, using every available means to obtain popular support for the Russian campaign, from film to theater and so on, from novels to comic strips. Nevertheless, fascism mainly uses the daily and magazine. It has spread Agencia Stefan, the Italian news, agents, and German presses and reports, articles and news to all the Italian press. This time, the fascist propaganda machine had a powerful ally, Catholic Church. It openly, openly blessed the war against the atheistic economy and indicated to the Italian armies a very ambitious aim to regain Russia with the Russian faith. Moreover, during the first months, some facts helped to appease people's fears about Mussolini's description to take part in the invasion. These facts were the impressive speed of the German troops at times, Red Army's apparent incapacity to stop Germany, and the possibility to take away raw materials and agricultural products from the occupied areas. Army, Italian Army Corps had, was uh, uh, 62,000 men strong, and it arrived at the front line between July and August 1941, having its battle of fire during the fourth of the end on the coast. There was a widespread illusion to end the war before Christmas, but Mussolini decided to dispatch more divisions already, already during the summer of 1941, and one year after, seven other divisions arrived in Russia, transforming the 35th Army Corps in the 230,000 men strong eight army, Colonel's Army, the means of uh, Italian army in Russia. German summer offensive began at the end of June 1942 and the Italian press immediately described it as the of the road. Then there is a route about a very fast war and the deployment of great masses of tanks and planes marked it up. At the end of July, the first news about the engagement of Italian detachments appeared on the press. Today, one cannot avoid to be greatly surprised by the deep imbalance between the impressive deployment of modern weapons and means put into the field by the Germans and the modesty of the Italian ones. We are sure that also some contemporary readers have the same feelings. The daily sport trail. On one side, the violent battle fights between Soviet and German army divisions, groups of artillery and flight formations. On the other side, the immortalized Italian infantrymen by the charges with hand grenades, launches, and cavalry charges. Everybody who was reading this news about the German summer offensive could easily develop a clear and simple idea. The invasion of the Soviet Union is a German war, and Italians can only participate with an auxiliary group. And now we can begin to examine the standard battle. Italian soldiers were finishing to throw up on the northern part of the Don by when the German troops began to lay siege to the city. And they remained there during all the standing of the battle. And they didn't take part in the fighting around the so-called Rosa capital. The Stalingrad battle was quickly proposed to the public opinion as the critical moment of the summer offensive. And on the same Russian country, propaganda and newspapers affirmed that the capital of the city would have permitted to the Axis armies to separate Caucasus and the Central Russian Front and to block definitively the war Nevertheless, the Italian 8th Army didn't participate in this ethical battle, and it was a great problem for fascist regimes, and the Italian public opinion was beginning to spread the perception of the company 
Italian subalternation towards Germany, and his feeling could diminish fascism's international prestige. The press also had the following interpretation. Our troops have to go to garrison the left side of the by securing the side and the rear of the army engaged on the siege. Therefore, propaganda concentrated on the exploit of Italian soldiers in the bank of the dawn. And, uh, and the press exalted the role of Italian soldier because, and I quote, also, if he will not take part in the parade in the streets of Stalin, he will be able to look properly at the Italians. Notwithstanding the description of the territory to fight inside and around the city was incomparably more impressive. Davis gave everyday description of the clashes of tanks, duels of artillery, coup de main, and air battles. From the middle of September, the papers announced the impending and unavoidable fall of the sea, and then described the hecatomb of men and weapons suffered, suffered by Soviet army, and they always assured the false calling the Soviet collapse. Italian and German leaderships weren't able to understand the enormous size of the Soviet project effort and patriotic mobilization, and it also happened for Russia and political prejudice. From the beginning of September, all the Italian journalists had written that the fall of the city were very close, but after a month on 10 October, they began to understand that the situation could have a different development, and they began to write that Stalin has become a mere presence without any strategic significance because Axis troops were in control of the border and the road to Caucasus. If the artilleries could have decided the siege, or the besiegers could have waited until the spring at the rain. Then, after 10 days, everything changed again. German troops went on to the offensive. Again, occupied the Red October land. Germans were exhausted and the offensive ended. And after 20 days, Red Army launched Uranus offensive and the Soviets were able to surround and to cut Stalin and besiegers off. Uranus didn't touch the Italian army, but four weeks later, these troops were hit hard by Operation Little Stalin. Then, after one month more, Mussolini's army were, went and its composite catastrophe. On 13 January 1940, so the army sprang ahead on the borders from its development and offensive to west, and in four days overwhelmed firstly the second Bulgarian army, mm -hmm. then the 24th German army corps, and at the end the Italian Alpin army corps. This, this last withstood the heavy fight and began to withdraw on 17 January 9. The retreat was a real disaster because it happened during the snowstorms with very low temperatures without any air and radio communication support. The troops had few food and transportation and suffered partisans and red armies threatened The outcome of the winter fight in the Don area was offered 27,000 injured and frozen men and 85,000 prisoners and missing soldiers. Only 10,030 of them come back home after the war. On the dot front line, first line, Italian marshals, 150,000 soldiers at the beginning of 1943, and more than 50% of them died. They almost were the 20% of the total Italian fallen during all the World War II. What kind of echo had this fact seen? Reviews of censored mail and of chief of police and press records showed that public, public opinion seemed to have heated dreads about the development of the war already before the winter crisis. People felt that the end of the campaign became ever more difficult 
Coast Soviet Union bore evidence of an almost endless capacity to regenerate its resources every, or after every defeat. Stalin and resistance had been declared near to the end for some months, but it seemed the embodiment of an endless war. Obviously, the press depicted the perfect organization and logistics. They did not lie about the inadequacy of the military equipment and law. And the camaleonic attitude of the press reached its climax when the final crisis began. In a few days, propaganda changed the interpretation of Axis through strategic goals. They declared that the Stalingrad conquer never was the main aim. The real mission had been to engage some Soviet armies while the Axis armies moved towards the Caucasus. This enviasing attitude reached its acme with the following statements. I quote, anyway, when two almost equal powers fight, the winner and the loser cannot be every time the same. The Italian machine of conflict reached the worst and most simple level when it wrote about the Alpine's vision rule. To be clear, nobody spoke about this rule. The agony of Paulus Arnes was described with bombastic but fundamentally truthful style. On the contrary, on the contrary the press continued to write about impregnable Italian strongholds and the air fights were aired, the Alpine troops wandered blindly on around the steppe. The ruinous road was depicted as a shortening of the front, and every time it was performed carefully, following clear but unfortunately inexistent instruction. The most simple sentences were written on 13 February 1943 by the most famous Italian, most, the greatest Italian lady, Corriere della Sera, the retreat is always the crucial test for an army, and this test had been overcome in a wonderful way by Italians. Soviets never were able to transform a well-performed, ordered, and well shipped retreat into a country. Only anti-fascist underground propaganda was able to leak out some truthful news about the Russian campaign. And there is a lot of uh, belief that, on, for instance, on 31 December, a 15 years old boy was arrested in Genoa because he had written on the walls, up with Ivan Petrovich, down with the Duce, up with the Stalin, the people's command. And on the 3 of February 1943, the same day of the uh, uh, surrender of the Germans, in Genoa was found a poster in this period. Fascist, the time has come. Russia is gaining the war. Up this border. And notwithstanding, citizens only knew the true dimension of Russian disaster when the first survivors came back to the war. Soldiers found this, surely had understood that something was going wrong because the post of Korea and the soldiers in Lviv didn't arrive from the Russian front since the end of 1942. But propaganda and censorship were able to keep people in the ignorance. Only the survivors disclosed the dimension of the disaster, the inefficiency of the Italian reports, and Germans' indifference for their hours destiny to be doing. Moreover, Soviet dropped propaganda materials over Italian detachments to invite them to surrender and to revolt against the fascist regime. And sometimes Soviets took at home these treatments and showed them to relatives and friends. The comprehension of the Russian disaster by the people was hard, slow and fragmented, and however it surely marked the turning point of the relationship between fascism and the Italian. Dissidents against regime and war became ever more widespread. It was no more bounded than the anti-fascist militant media. On 5 March, the most powerful strike in the last 20 years broke out in the Turin factories, and migrant workers began to strike during the second half of the war. These strikes mainly had wage claims 
but they were led back by anti-fascists. And there also were slogans against the war and alliance with Nazi Germany. Surely, Axis military crisis in the far Russian steppe had a leading role to promote a mass adhesion to the strife, weakening the fascist authoritarianism. To conclude, we want to state that the majority of Italian people surely had the heated responsibility to have accepted the support of fascist belligerent attitude for many years. And at the same time, many soldiers were responsible for a large number of war crimes in both Eastern and Northern Africa and in the Soviet Union. And only military defeats and massacres were capitalized, and they resulted in the loss of the most important fascist political capital, public opinion scope. After 20 years of fascism, Hitler's military and war crimes, only resistance and deeds of the Italian military intervenes in Germany during 1943-45 were able to give back to Italy itself. So 